Welcome to Institute of Quality and Reliability. Hi, this is Heyman. Hypothesis Testing Part 4 Pair T Test Before watching this video, we recommend viewers to watch our videos on Hypothesis Testing Part 1 Introduction to Hypothesis Testing and One Sample Z Test Part 2 One Sample T Test and Students T Distribution and Part 3 Two Sample T Test Links to these videos are provided in the description of this video Students t-test is commonly used to assess whether means of two independent populations are equal or have specified difference between them. But sometimes the data is not independent and it is actually in pairs. We will now illustrate another popular application of students t-test, the pair t-test. Let us see some applications of paired t-test. For example, we want to find out whether results of two laboratories are comparable or significantly different. We want to find out whether measurements done at our supplier are same or significantly different than our measurements. We want to find out whether evaluation of answer papers by two different examiners is comparable or significantly different or are blood pressure measurements by two doctors equal or significantly different in most cases of paired t-test we want to assess whether the mean difference between paired data is zero then the null hypothesis will be given by a zero mu d equal to zero where mu d is the mean difference between the paired data the alternate hypothesis can take one of the following forms H0 mu d not equal to 0 and this will be a two tail test with alpha risk distributed on both tails H1 mu d greater than 0 one tail test with alpha risk distributed on right tail or mu d less than 0 one tail test with alpha risk distributed on left tail let us now see calculations of paired t test Consider that we have data A1, B1, A2, B2, A3, B3 up to A, N, B, N, etc. First, we calculate the difference between each paired value that is A1 minus B1, A2 minus B2, A3 minus B3 and we write these as D1, D2, D3 up to Dn as the differences in the N pairs. After that, we calculate the average difference D bar and the standard deviation of the difference S D. Having calculated these two values, we can now estimate the T statistic and that can be calculated as D bar upon S T by square root N, where N is the number of pairs in the data. This T calculated should be compared with critical value of T distribution with N minus one degrees of freedom, where N is the number of pairs. Let us now see an application example to understand the procedure. A university wants to determine whether assessment of answer papers in a particular examination is consistent between two professors. Therefore, 16 answer papers are given to these two professors A and B for their evaluation and scoring of marks. Following table shows marks as per assessments by the two professors. Is the assessment by the two professors comparable at 5% significance level or at 95% confidence level? We will use Microsoft Excel to illustrate the calculations. These are the marks as per the assessment of the two professors, Professor A and Professor B. First, we need to find out the difference between marks assessed by A minus marks assessed by B. We could also do the other way around, B minus A. So, we will do A minus B. And we'll just copy the formula. So, these are the differences of A minus B. 
Now we need to calculate the average difference first. So the average difference is 1.5 and the standard deviation of this differences is so I need to select stdv.s and then all the differences and the deviation of the differences yeah the standard deviation is 2.633 I can round it off to 2 or 3 decimals yeah 2.633 now the t calculated will be equal to we will substitute these values in the formula the numerator is d bar that is equal to 1.5 divided by i should use bracket the standard deviation is sd that is 2.633 divided by square root of n is sqrt of 16 that is actually 4 but we will use the formula and that gives us a t calculated value of 2.278 again we will round it off to three decimals to get these three values so the average is 1.5 standard deviation is 2.633 but the t calculated is 2.279 now we need to compare this calculated value of t statistic with critical value of t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom n minus 1 here is 15 and it's a two-tail test as we want to find out the difference between the professors. So let us open the t-distribution table. Here is the t-distribution table and we can see that the two-tail alpha risk of 0.05 this is the column that we can select and then we have to select 15 degrees of freedom here. If we select these values we get a t-distribution critical value of 2.1314. So I write here T critical. So we have to compare the calculated T statistic with the critical value of T distribution that is 2.1314. Clearly the 2.279 is greater than 2.1314. So I'll just make it red. Therefore we must reject the null hypothesis and thus the two professors have significant difference in assessment of answer papers at 95% confidence level. We can also use Excel add-in in data analysis. We had illustrated a similar procedure for two sample t-test in one of our previous videos, Hypothesis Test Part 3. So here we use the data command data menu and then we go to the data analysis menu and here we select t test paired to sample for means we click excel here for variable one range we select professor a and for variable two range we select professor b we should not forget to check on the labels the hypothesized mean difference is zero here and then we can select output range having selected the range we can click ok here and excel immediately gives us the results so let us see whether the results given by the excel procedure match with our results i think the mean and everything should match the first let us check whether the t statistic matches with our results i am just marking it red for the purpose and our calculation was 2.279 and this is 2.2786 so if we uh, round it off to three decimals it will match with our result yes very good and then uh, t critical 2 tell is calculated here and i will just round it off again to three decimals or four decimals here and then it matches with our result 2.1314 now we look at the p-value for two tail test and that p-value excel has given us 0 0.037 if i round it off to three decimals then it is 0 0.038 so since the p-value is less than the alpha risk of 0 
that is also the significance level of 0.05, we must reject the null hypothesis. The real confidence level at which you can just reject can be calculated as 1 minus the p-value and that is 0 0.038. And the confidence level which we can reject the null hypothesis is 96.2%. Uh, 96 so it's greater than 95% and therefore we must reject the null hypothesis. Let us understand a little more about this p-value to tail. So we just go to Minitab to find out more about this p-value. In Minitab I use the graph command and probability distribution plot and then view probability. You can use the drop down box to select the t distribution and add the degrees of freedom as 15. The shaded area we want to see the right tail area and the x value that we want to put is 2.279. Yes, we will see now what is the area to the right of this point 2.279 and we can see that the p-value that we get here is 0 0.01886 but this is only on one tail so we have to double this value. For that we multiply by 2 so equal to 0 0.01886 and multiplied by 2. And that gives me 0 0.03772. If we round it off to three decimals, we see 0 0.038 and then it matches with the value calculated by Excel. So whenever this p-value is lower than alpha risk, we must reject the null hypothesis. The lower the p-value, stronger is the evidence to reject null hypothesis. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it worth watching. Please subscribe to Institute of Quality and Reliability channel if you want to watch more videos on Reliability Engineering, Six Sigma and Statistical Quality Control. Click on the subscribe and bell icon to get notified for future videos.